Hi everyone and welcome to APMG Midday Mentors. I'm Suchitra from APMG India and today I have with me Suresh GP and Stefan Brendel. Suresh is the Managing Director of Job Solutions, an accredited training organization with APMG and Suresh is an accredited trainer with a wealth of experience. Hi Suresh, welcome. Thanks Suchitra, thanks for having me and thanks Stefan. Nice to meet you. I would have loved to meet this one earlier, but great. Great to meet you all. Hope you're all doing well and staying fine. Doing well. Thank you. Thank you, Suresh. Hello, Suchitra. Hi, Suresh. Yes, Suresh. Uh, good to see you. We've, we've met in the past several times. And um, uh, um, I want to I tell you the truth. I've spoken to Suchitra in a previous episode um, about how happy I am with, with the BRMP. And she said, well, you shouldn't be too happy about it because there's another <laughs> level. Um, and uh, she said, you might probably tell me, give me some more insight about that other, other level. So I think that's what we should talk about. Today. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So um, over to you both and just let's see how this conversation unfolds. So Stefan, uh, how, many, how, much do you rem- how much do you know about the CBRM or the Certified Business Relationship Manager, it's a level beyond the BRMP. Well, there are two answers to that. Number one is, as I'm an APMG manager, of course I know about uh, the CBRM and I'm recommending this to people. That's not that's answer number one. Answer number two is because I'm a BRMP myself. Right. Yeah. And I'm using the principles and the techniques. Yeah? There might be a different answer. At the moment, I don't see for the, the, the maturity level I'm in and using the BRMP um, knowledge from the, from the uh, body of knowledge. I think um, I'm fit for purpose for what I'm doing at the moment. <laughs> yeah, so that's a good one. But if I look at fit for use, let's talk about the warranty aspect of it. How much time would you actually think that the PRM body of knowledge alone is going to use be of use? Because techniques and principles are alone not enough. An organization looks at building a capability. So do you think that the PRMP body of knowledge is sufficient enough to deal with the situation at hand? Now, if we just go with the practical um, use of it, right? Right. Some of the improvements I've experienced is in particular the difference between demand fulfillment or requirements management and demand shaping. Right. That was quite an eye-opener to me. Yeah, it's because with demand shaping, I'm, I, I'm, I'm able to um, <clears throat> go to a customer and not just telling him, asking him, what do, what do you want and what can I deliver? But to put this in a strategic pattern of what is it that we can deliver and how might that fit into yours, for example, yours, top Solutions strategy. And I think that's a great step forward. This is, this is active and not passive. Right. And um, I'm experiencing a lot of success with that at the moment, I have to say. Well, that's great news, and I'm, I'm sure that you'll have more success on that. But when you talk about demand shaping and uh, instead of demand fulfillment, is that enough for you? Or how are your stakeholders rating you on the BRM maturity model? You remember that five-step maturity model? So I'm trying to see whether that has been practiced in your own stakeholder engagements, be it internal or external. Well, first of all, the model helps me to understand which of my customers uh, where I'm just an order taker and uh, the others is where am I actually considered for for strategic um, uh, consideration, right? So, right. yeah, I, I know. And that's helpful to, to see that. Um, I haven't done the homework to do this with each and every customer. Right. Um, what maturity level are we in there? And I have to admit, sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error Correct. to find out how far can I get into the next stage. Yeah, and I'm sure that some I know that sometimes they just elevate the pitches as the <laughs> opportunity to do that. Right, but what is it that the CBRM could help me here with? Absolutely. Now, the reason why I provocated the BRM maturity model 
is I want to trigger a conversation. You did mention that you would like to do a trial and error method to see how I move from order taker to a strategic partner. In some cases, it is relatively easy because you would know where to go from order taker to trusted advisor or service provider or trusted advisor. But in many places, you do not have the practices. It's like a maze. It's like an uncharted territory. Now, what CBRM does is to give you definitive practices, templates, toolkit that you can leverage on a case-to-case basis. Because each and every one are working in different environments. It could be commercial profit sectors. It could be non-profit sectors. It doesn't matter. All that matters is how am I delivering value and achieving that strategic partnership. For that, you need to have some prescriptive guidance that will help us to reach to that element that you want to achieve. And that is what has been prescribed in three days that we cover into much more greater detail. And by the way, it's a 354 pages book. Yeah, and that's why I want to challenge this because, you know, I don't want to go like following a recipe. And it sounds a bit like that. Right. Like I have to read 350 pages uh, to know how I can survive um, a a once-in-a-lifetime elevator pitch, right? You're not going to tell me that this is the case. No, absolutely right. Now, one of the things that I'm working with organizations, small, medium size, and large, are looking at Stefan is really smart. He does a great job. But we need more Stefan, and they cannot just put everybody just to uh, a training they ultimately need a capability building exercise. Mm -hmm. So one of the real reasons CBRM is the go getter is they are trying to build an organizational capability around business relationship management. So whether you're playing the role of business analyst, uh, delivery manager, infrastructure support, it doesn't matter. How can you build that capability that each and every one in the value chain is resonating to a higher purpose and value delivery. And if you believe me, today you are good enough because you have been in the company for a long period of time, Stefan, but there are so many unknowns that you're going to get into with this disruptive world or VUCA world. So it is better that you have an armor or a toolkit that comes in handy in any situation that you can come there and take action and see without any surprises how does that sound well that sounds um well that makes me think let me put it this way right yeah uh because uh i agree with you there is there's changes happening all the time and so if i if i'm measuring valuing an organization maturity level and i forget to consider that that is changing while I'm measuring it, while I'm validating it, yeah. And that's a, that's a good point. And I also see that when I go to my customers, you have to be at least two levels above your business partners and customers. So what I need is I need that knowledge, that experience, that will complement me to become someone they look upon. Because when you are as a strategic partner, we remember we are talking about shared risk and shared rewards. That also means that how much can I give more than what I'm doing today. For that, you need to be at a level of capability that I think is going to be super important. And believe me, you will not regret, you will not regret when you go through this exercise. And it is a, a, a good use of your time and effort to, to navigate into the uncharted territories. I could go for the exercise. Yeah? Um, the experience um, that that you were talking about is so are you going to tell me that these 350 pages uh, in the book are kind of a written down best practice in terms of experience or is it rather techniques so what is it that the manual is given me it gives you a detailed aspect of practices techniques and methodology of how we approach for example how are you going to be dealing with the first meeting with your business partner. How are we going to do the customer value hierarchy? So they go into much more details of step-by-step approach, which is more prescriptive. So it could be a technique. 
practice and more hands-on in looking at different scenarios. So this is like not a, a book of just reading it for the sake of reading it. You're enjoying it because you're putting yourself into that situation and finding out different scenarios to act upon. And even the exam is not a memory-based exam, by the way. It is talking about scenarios that you have to test yourself. Mm -hmm. In such kind of scenarios, how do you act upon it? So it's a combination of techniques, practices, and prescriptive guidance that helps us to assimilate the situation much better holistically. So, uh, Stefan, I don't you think that actually sounds good, what uh, Suresh is actually telling us, that... Scaling up to be a CBRM from what he has just spoken about sounds something that you must look into now. Well, there's some strong arguments. I have to agree, Suchitra, that Suresh is bringing up. Um, 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 I wonder yeah, how much of a practitioner do I have to become first before a training of CBRM or, or the examination, um, I, I would be properly prepared. I mean, I don't think, what would you, what you think, Suchitra, is that this is this can't be the, the typical foundation practitioner kind of thing, like you you do this in two weeks from uh, from a BRMP to a CBRM. Um, I think there's some practical, and, and I want, what you, want to know how much of that has to happen first. That's a fair point. I mean, how, so, so today, what do you have to say for that? How much of a this is an much? excellent point, yeah. uh, Paul. This is not just you completed your BRMP, what next? Let's go to CPRM. It would be a disaster. Let's be very honest. <laughs> we don't want to create disaster. But what we are saying is that once you have a BRMP, you understand the different aspects. But then you need to have real-world experience. I would suggest that you should have at least a year to two years that you have gone through applying these competencies at various junctures, and then you would have identified, how do I handle the situation? Because then you will trigger, what I learned is not enough for me. When I go to the person with that, I did this one, but it didn't work. What did I do wrong? So that is the trigger when you come to a CBRM. And he said, you are telling about it because you need a coach. The CBRM is a coach who tells you, what have you done? How did it work? Why did it not work? And what are the options? So that is a revelation during the course where people have done this. So many of the people who attend the sessions have at least done three, four years as part of their job. They've got the BRMP and then they realize they need to upgrade themselves to CBRM. When they come in, they say, well, this is what happened in my scenario. So it's more of a dialogue that they are reflect reflecting upon what has happened and they go with all the answers. Because now they are not looking at a book. They're looking at the real life situation that is handled, what they could have done better. And believe me, 90% of the people tell, I wish I attended the CBRM class earlier. I could have, I could have prevented some of these mistakes. Yes, but if he attended earlier, he might not have got the point because he was missing the point. <laughs> it's a chicken egg story. It is a chicken egg story. <laughs> but at least... Yeah, it's bad. At least two to three... Okay, Definitely. so a couple of years Definitely. for sure as a BRMP and then... Well, just you made a good point, Suresh, I have to admit. Uh, Suchitra, um, with all the power in your back to call in Suresh to get me convinced, uh, at least you you uh, you achieved a few milestones, I think, on that one. <laughs> and it's, it's a fun one. It's a, it's a real fun one, I think. I have thoroughly enjoyed CBRM and for a company alone, we apply what we learned in real-time practice. So we are not talking, we are living and breathing and eating BRM. So that's where I think CBRM gets to a pedestal. And everyone in the journey who has gone through CBRM will be able to resonate with that. And I hope and believe, Stefan, when I see you next time, you are still seriously considering to make this a reality. So probably the next time I see you, you might be a CBRM when I meet you. Then we have a lot more insights to share. Could be. Yeah, right. Thank you very much, Suresh. Thank you so much, Suchitra. Thank you, Suresh. Thank you so much for joining. And I'm sure Stefan is quite convinced now. And we hope to see him as a CBRM pretty soon. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening and watching this interesting conversation. 
please do subscribe to APMG's YouTube channel. Do like and share this video. And if you are a BRMP, you please do feel free to reach out to Suresh. His uh, uh, contact details are mentioned below for any questions on CBRM or BRMP for that matter. And please feel free to connect with us. Thank you again for watching.